So as I was doing research for this particular video, there was another YouTube video that started to autoplay without me noticing, and it was this guy that just started off rambling and, and just screaming, saying, blah, 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 and I'm like, who is this? And, 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 and then I realized it was me. Um, apologies in advance. I promise never to do that again. Anyway, that's why in this video particularly, we are going to be talking about a slurry of important news issues that, of course, you're probably not going to hear the full context of on the mainstream media, including the latest updates with Iran, the potential of the United States shooting down its own drone. We're also going to be talking about the latest symbols of uh, white supremacy. What? We're also going to be talking about China. And, of course, we're going to give you the latest and most important updates with the billionaire pedophile Jeffrey Epstein, the man that is literally responsible for the majority of people who believe that there are elite pedophile satanic extortion rings because probably there are but anyway that's irregardless of this entire situation and matter let's just jump into the most important story that's developing right now and that is the news happening of course in the strait of hormuz a small waterway trade route along the coast of iran Oman and the UAE, which is very important to understand here because if you've been watching our previous videos, even specifically the ones about the Chinese, the man-made military islands, we reminded you and everyone else that major wars always start with major trade routes. And the Strait of Hormuz is one of those trade routes that a lot of these latest very dangerous escalations are happening. And they're very dangerous mainly because Iran is allied with Russia and China. And of course, the United States, which is its major adversary, is allied with Israel and Saudi Arabia that have been the bigger world powers that have been at each other's throats in the Middle East. And the situation escalated very seriously as just moments ago, we are getting news that Iran seized yet another oil tanker this one specifically belonging and flying the British flag. We're getting word now that it could be actually two tankers that were seized by Iran. All of this is, of course, breaking news happening right now. And this is after the incident yesterday where we covered where Iran seized previous oil tanker that was alleged to be owned by the UAE. But now that was a mystery. This, of course, is all on the heels of the United Kingdom recently also seizing an Iranian tanker, which they alleged was going to go to Syria to break an embargo. Now, we're still waiting for a response or a very heavy-handed reaction by the UK and the United States, which is expected here, but Iran officially is saying that they seized a British tanker in the Gulf because it, quote, failed to respect maritime rules. And what's really important to understand here that this is just a tit-for-tat retaliation that's building up the larger escalations of an inevitable conflict that we've been telling you is going to happen. And just within the last six days, these escalations are continuing to grow, especially with the news yesterday that we covered with the United States, specifically Donald Trump talking about how the United States Navy shot down an Iranian drone that was coming too close to their fleet of ships when the United States was warning it to turn around and when the Iranian drone did not, the United States was forced to shoot it down and destroy it. Well, that's the official story from Donald Trump and from the United States. And of course, as we said yesterday, we were waiting for the Iranian response, which was going to be most likely the complete opposite of what Donald Trump said. And guess what? That's exactly what has happened with Iran officially saying that they actually didn't lose any drones at all and that the United States might have downed its own drone by mistake with them even releasing a video showing the drone in question surveilling and watching the U.S. fleet and then also safely returning back. This is all information and evidence provided by Iran's deputy foreign minister. And we have to understand here, historically, states, specifically militaries, don't always tell the truth. There's always competing sides here, but if the Iranians don't have a missing drone and the United States shot down a drone, which they're claiming is not theirs, whose drone was it? Was there another party, maybe a third party, trying to raise and escalate the tensions in that area? Well, well, we don't know. But again, the United States is doubling down and saying, no, we shot down a drone, doubling down on their assertions that again, they were provoked to do so. And 
did so. But I do believe in my own personal opinion that this could be based off my own personal speculation, my own personal beliefs, my own opinion. I, and I want to say this because not enough people do this in the news industry. When, you, when you're talking about something that you can't say for 100% honesty, tell people it's your opinion. In my opinion, this could be the work of a third party trying to escalate the tensions in the region. And again, everything I've been saying for a very long time, it's, it's coming to fruition. And it's something that I don't find pleasure in being right in, but I do want to, again, highlight the importance of the larger escalations here and how important it is for us to know exactly what's happening in order to try to stop it. Our awareness on issues is key to see how they play out to see if there will be actually any accountability. The more eyeballs, the more likelihood of accountability, which has proven to be the case with many important cases like the Jeffrey Epstein case, where we are finding out today that two more accusers are coming forward after Jeffrey Epstein was denied bail. And again, when we covered him being denied bail, we talked about the importance of many people feeling finally safe, that they will be away from the strong arms and well-connected Jeffrey Epstein that has unlimited mysterious wealth and unlimited connections to law enforcement and the upper echelons of our political social systems. And finally, we are seeing some of the skeletons come out of the closets and some actual investigations being had here, including the investigation announced today where a Palm Beach sheriff is looking into and opening up an internal affairs investigation into the Palm Beach County authorities that gave Jeffrey Epstein a slap on the wrist after his 2008 court ordeals. And if they're going to do that, there needs to be an investigation on the New York City Police Department, the NYPD, that by the way, let this man skip judge appointed, judge ordered check-ins with them, which he was supposed to do for 90 days, but did none of it. And the NYPD allowed him to do this and never criminally went after him after after violating this court order 34 times which by the way should be equal to a major prison sentence because of just that violation which the NYPD just you know they just let go they just you know doesn't matter to them and again uh, this story like a lot of the stories we're highlighting should make you question why would you ever give up your authority to a bureaucratic large state-run institution uh, I, again, I have nothing against individual NYPD officers, but goodness, great. How can you allow such travesty of justice to happen to your department and still act like you have any respect and decency as a large organization? I'm sorry, I'm going off here. Um, mother. Moving forward, as we talked about yesterday, everyone is bracing, including many elites in New York City and Washington DC for the release of documents that are going to be coming out very shortly surrounding the 2008 case. When many people, including Vanity Fair, saying, quote, it's going to be staggering the amount of names as the Jeffrey Epstein case grows more grotesque, Manhattan and DC brace for impact. And yeah, rightfully so. Finally, the dirty, disgusting skeletons are coming out of the closet. One's allegedly tied into the upper echelons that we have been railing against since the foundation of our independent media organization, with many people claiming that Epstein was connected and a part of institutions like the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, and it wouldn't surprise me if he was, specifically with his connections that he had with individuals like Henry Kissinger, the late David Rockefeller, Lord Jacob Rothschild, and many other elites, billionaires, and people of question in our society. Hiring, of course, the best lawyers to get him off that were able to get him off, including Dershowitz. I mean, goodness, this man helped get off O.J. Simpson, and he's just made a statement right now boasting that he had a, quote, perfect, perfect uh, intimate affairs life. As, of course, he is being alleged and accused of not only pedophilia, but rape as well. Who, who would have thought? And, and to quickly move on before people get images in their head, I want to talk about the Chris Pratt story since Yahoo Entertainment came out with a headline article 
talking about how Chris Pratt was wearing a white supremacist t-shirt. Now, you might ask yourself, well, staggering, brave journalism uncovering the deepest, darkest secrets of our celebritard culture that are hateful and bigoted, right? No, no. Chris Pratt was wearing a, a Don't Tread on Me t-shirt, which is a symbol of pro-freedom, pro-liberty. And of course, after getting the buzz and the attention and the rage clicks, they still stood by their insane standards of information, of, of news. And they changed their article headline to Chris Pratt criticized for t-shirt choice, which to me is absolutely insane and highlights two very important issues in our society that I want to get into in a little bit. But again, Chris Pratt wears, wears many different t-shirts. Obviously, he is wearing one here that says freedom, another one that says Godfidence. Here, Jesus loves you, an American flag sweater, an American eagle, and of course, uh, this one as well. And right on for Chris Pratt, like any other individual in this country, for expressing himself like he wants to express himself, like the freedom that we have entitled in this country to at least now, we still have, still, that hasn't been stripped away from us yet, unlike other countries, still we have the right to wear whatever we want. To wear. But that's not enough for these libtard ninnies that want to take that right away. And in my opinion, there's two things happening here that are big problems in our society. Number one is it could be the establishment trying to, of course, push the Overton window to scare people from even expressing the ideas of freedom and liberty, which stands against the major agenda that they're trying to push against you, which is servitude and slavery. You look at anything pushed on by the mainstream media, the ultimate end goal of it is usually slavery or just mental cancer or just uh, insanity, but that's a whole nother thing. So that could be one probability of why this ass hattery exists here. The second one could be profit with, of course, Yahoo not being as popular as Google. And of course, the news industry in general just going down the crap hole because of how horrible they are, because of people just seeing blatantly, hey, the mainstream media works for special interests. That's why they're so powerful and have so much money. And that's why they're, <laughs> they're the biggest names in news. Uh, they're filled with the most crap because they're filled with the most money. They're filled with the most interest directing something that is supposed to be honest. And to me, the second thing that could be happening here is this could be a profit motive trying to create rage clicks so we could talk about them just like we are now. And we probably failed and we're probably doing that. Which one do you think is possible? Scenario one, over 10 windows. Scenario two, rage click profits. Let me know in the comment section below because I personally don't know and I'm still figuring it out as I'm investigating and researching everything and being distracted by my own videos scaring the crap out of me. But that's a whole nother story. I want to end it here and say thank you, beautiful, amazing human beings, for being a part of this independent media broadcast because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. You, you guys donating a dollar, you guys sharing this video, my goodness, golly gracious, means the world to me. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity, giving me your time. And I hope to see you tomorrow, like every day, where we're going to be telling you what the hell is going on. Not really telling you, we're questioning everything. Anyway, love you. Stay tuned for more.